Like you said, you did a lot of hostels, but like all the time, was it like sometimes hard to find a place to sleep? Maybe you slept in the other extreme places, like oh, yeah. I yeah. Have, I have, you know, slept on beaches. And huh. <laughs> That's awesome. And I've actually a few times I've been stranded uh -huh. in an odd place. I my first number of trips I hit it mostly hitchhiking. I mm -hmm. eat somewhere, no transfer, in the middle of nowhere. But I'd see lights over somewhere. I think, okay, there's people there. And I go over and I just knock on doors. And I've had that experience of being taken in and being very well treated. Yes. Oh, that's and awesome. even if you don't speak language, you make schlaf and schlaf and <laughs> door near and they know what you want. Yeah. Yes. That's nice. Um, when you traveled, did you met a lot of people? Like yeah. You met a lot. Did yes, you? that's that's one of the joys of travel. Mm -hmm. I I'm not afraid to speak out and open up. So if I'm sitting on someone in a train or I just meet someone in a cafe, I open up and talk to them mm -hmm. because that's what that's that's the big value of travel is getting to exchange ideas and exchange different experiences with other people. Do Do you have a Uh, still friends that you met on the road that you're still in contact? I do have some. I mean, the problem is, especially people, you meet people who are like you, who also travel a lot, which means it's you lose touch because you lose addresses. Yeah. And even now with the internet, you think, okay, well, that's better, but you still do lose touch. But I have many friends uh, that I've that I, I have contacts with. Um, particularly, I have several in France, for instance, that I go and stay with, uh, that I've met traveling, and I'm always happy to see them. That's awesome. This is, this is one, of the, one of the perks you get. Mm. Meeting, meeting people and meeting... meeting people from all over the world. Creating new friends. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, like, What are the joys does traveling give you? Oh, how long do we have? Lots of joys. <laughs> I think I would have to say, I growing up, I had a mother who was a big control freak, you know, one of you, and I think I always resisted that and wanted to feel the sense of freedom. And I think some of the purest freedom you get is traveling. Mm -hmm. You go somewhere. Especially in the early days, you didn't, when you didn't have the internet, you didn't have any of this, you didn't have cell phones, you didn't have anything. You went somewhere, you, you didn't know anyone, and you had this complete freedom of you can do whatever you want to do. No one is going to hold you back. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, did you uh, uh, try recording your travels, like uh, books? Yes, I've written three books, and I'm working on the fourth. I kept diaries, for the most part. Uh, since the internet, I have don't I don't write as much. I, I tend to write more notes, important notes, and then do the write-ups uh, after I get back, instead of spending as much time while I'm traveling. And and what are your books called? My book's called, the first one is Safari yeah. Napaka, mm -hmm. which is travel with cat in Swahili. And no, the book is not in Swahili, the book is in English, uh -huh. but just the title is <laughs> in Swahili. Uh -huh. The second book is If You Haven't Been Pinched, You Haven't Been to Rome, uh -huh. based on a funny story I heard from a, a person on the freighter that I took to Europe the first time. And the third book is uh, Planet Earth Vagabond. And uh, this, uh, the, like I say, I'm working on one now, which is taking me more time than it should. Uh, writing is a, a very solitary thing. You have to confine yourself to write. And I, obviously, from what you can sense, my travel, wanting to meet people, I'm not a solitary person. So it's a very difficult uh, thing for me. Huh. And. Uh, 
can people uh, buy your books? They maybe can. Somewhere? They're online. Uh, they, they're also available at the Writers Club in right. Chiang Mai. Uh -huh. If you want to come visit Chiang Mai, they're here. Uh, online, a number of sites mm -hmm. that they can be purchased. So if they wanted to look look at at your books, uh, your first name and last name. First name. My first name is Catherine. Yeah. And last name is Nesbitt. Uh -huh. They are un bo under both Catherine Nesbitt and Kat Nesbitt. Okay, that's all. Awesome. And uh, like you said, uh, you're uh, living now in uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand. Mm -hmm. yes. Why did you decide uh, to choose this country? But my my uh, I'm retired now. And my uh, pension is not big, so the more I save in my living expenses, the more I have to spend to travel. Mm -hmm. So, so and Thailand. My, a a Thailand in general is a very good place. Cost is very low, plus good, very good medical and dental care for very little money. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, do you have other countries that you really liked that well, you wish to live live there well, now? A number of countries I'd like to live. Some of them, they cost too much money. Mm. I love the Caribbean. <laughs> I love all the, the Caribbean islands, but they're very expensive. I love France partly because it was my first country, my first travel experience. And then I, I love everything. I love the French food. I love the French lifestyle. But it too is a little, it's a little bit more expensive. A number of places, any number of places that I could easily live. But Thailand offers me, like I say, not only the medical and dental, but uh, Bangkok is a very good hub for flights out anywhere in the world. So you, you have access to travel very easily from here. So, and uh, the last question would be, do you have uh, any advice for young people, it's like living in this day? Uh, it's, this is a difficult time to live in, because there you have more, more terrible pressures on you. you the planet is dying, for yeah, one. That's true. And uh, you have... Difficult situations, political situations all over the world. But as I mentioned earlier, the biggest thing that will hold you back is if you have fear. So the best thing is to don't don't be afraid. Simply go ahead and, and and do it. There are many ways. I've had people say, okay, you travel a lot for long trips. You don't have to travel long. You can travel short. You can make it whatever you want. But just don't be fearful and go out and open yourself to the world. That's some wonderful advice. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So th this was Catherine Cat. She's 81 and she's almost traveled all over the world. <laughs> and I want to say thank you to Mr. Harold, who <laughs> is a lovely, lovely traveler himself, uh, starting out, and I envy him, he has his life ahead of him to travel. Yeah, thank you.